This is a personal video that I am making with some trepidation. I want a free flow of my speaking here, but before starting that, I feel it very important to emphasize the point that this is a personal video. It is not directly related to do with anything with open source ecology, factory farm, nor any of the people here. But it will touch on why I am involved with the project, my personal problems, and what I was personally hoping to get from my experience throwing myself in here. My name is Howard, and I am a lifelong sufferer of major depressive disorder, and I am a long-term sufferer from generalized anxiety disorder, migraine, psoriasis, and some other medical issues. Now, it's kind of hard to talk about these things, but they are important, and I don't think enough people talk about them. As a person who suffers from depression, that is clinical depression, I want to emphasize by defining what depression is and what it is not. Someone who suffers from clinical long-term depression isn't just sad because something bad happened. Every day things happen. Little slights, little disappointments. Most people can just keep on going and get through it but someone who suffers from a depressive disorder, such as major depressive disorder, which I have, is essentially unable to recover from any of these little things. And of course, anytime a big thing comes along, we're really not able to get past the mourning stage. It's a medical problem. It's a neurochemical imbalance. When you have clinical depression, you can't really think your way out. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how hard you think about it, or how solid you are in rationality and logic. You can't think your way out of it. I have had a situation, a circumstance that arose that actually did make me feel not depressed for about eight months. That's eight months out of my life and I am about 35 and a half years old right now. I was pre-diagnosed with depression when I was in kindergarten and I still very much feel it. Some of the problems I've been having lately essentially uh, my current bad bout of depression the current bad phase traces back to when I lost my jobs back in uh, February of 2009. It's almost three years ago. There's always problems with people losing their jobs. I mean, it, after a while, you do keep putting out those job applications, but after a while, they kind of pile up and you feel like you're just throwing them out to the wind. And uh, suffering from depression as I do, I tend to start feeling useless, of course. I don't like being a, a mooch. I got turned down for unemployment, so I wound up having to move back in with my folks. And I started feeling useless and a charity case for my friends and bless my friends they're generous they're kind and understanding and they like me as a person and it it doesn't bother them too much that I've been unemployed for so long and I've run out of friends who do care about such things long ago <laughs> um, and this it just gradually gets worse over time and it started getting to the point where I was starting to look for at least volunteer projects. I mean, my money situation is bad, so I don't even have a lot of money to throw regularly at, at gas for getting around. It's starting to feel useless. That, that, that's dangerous when you suffer from depression, as I do, because then that starts leading down the line of thought, well, maybe the world would be better off without me. And yes, I was starting to feel down along that line especially the couple of months prior to my coming down here. And so that was actually a selfish reason why I threw myself at this project. I mean, obviously, for my selfishness to, uh, for me to ingratiate myself on my selfishness, it has to be a project I believe in. And when I learned about this project from my friend David, I started realizing how many doors it would open for me. And of course it's important. I still really truly value what it could do for the, the billions 
of impoverished people on this planet who have no access to basic technology that could let them take care of themselves. That's important, but it, it, it's kind of hard to get a get a feel of that, a personal feel, since I've never been to these impoverished nations and witnessed firsthand. I mean, it is kind of hard to get a feel. So I think we all tend to to look for something that's a bit more personal to us, and my feelings of worthlessness, of being locked out, of not being able to do basic things, that's that's my own selfish reason for getting involved with open source ecology and developing the global village construction set. I mean, yeah, I have looked at tractors and other machinery that it would take to uh, help establish a self-supporting community. So we could be truly independent, do things our way, and just be an actual community instead of strangers living in, in cities or even in, in smaller towns or wherever we find ourselves for when we're hunting for a job and a place to stay. So I came down here with the thought I started uh, before I came down here I started involving myself in documentation for uh, open source ecology so far as I know, I was the first one to try to put together a comprehensive document that would that I was intending to be published as a uh, PDF that would be a complete instruction set for a machine. In that case, it was the CEB Press. So I started spearheading that, and I think that's what got Martin's attention and got him to invite me down here. And I was starting to think to myself in terms of, you know, my depression, my, my situation, that great, you know, I wouldn't, I knew I wasn't going to get paid. I knew I was going to have to draw on my very strange and weak uh, savings, what little I had, no income, and I, you know, I knew that trying to take care of myself would be an issue. But... I felt that it might help me with my depression because I could actually do something useful for a project. I wouldn't feel as beggy as and needy as I do when I go on a job interview or fill out a job application. I feel like when I'm doing that, it, it, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I'm begging. I feel like I'm a beggar begging for a job. And that, that's really hard, and, it, and it, it, it's gotten to the point where I don't even want to do it anymore. And, yeah, I, I've slacked off, especially the, the past year or so, and I haven't put out job applications as regularly as I used to. It is a strain, and because I suffer from depression, each little one that I put out that I don't even get a response on, or even if I do get to an interview and then don't get selected for, it does feel like a rejection. I know that doesn't rationally make any sense, but the thing about depression is it doesn't make any rational sense. It's a disease. It's emotions running away from your thoughts. And you can't control them. I mean, you can try and try and try to think about it, but they're always there. They're persistent, and you're having to fight it. It's, it's like trying to avoid coughing or sneezing when you got a cold. I mean, you can't keep it off. It's there. So unfortunately, uh, it hasn't alleviated my depression entirely. It's changed the changed its nature. You know, I was kind of, I was pretty much becoming vegetative and sedentary over the the almost three years of being unemployed and dependent on my folks again at, at in my thirties for crying out loud. Well, at least I'm not vegetative or sedentary now. I'm not. You know, when I was with my folks, I just wound up locking myself in my room all day and playing on my computer, stupid computer games and whatnot. Well, I'm not doing that here. I don't even have access to my uh, computer. <laughs> all I have is my laptop, which isn't very powerful. And that's why it's taking me so long to edit these videos. Anyhow, the nature of my depression has changed from uh, what it was previously. It was kind of a like a, a wet blanket that was gradually getting wet wetter and heavier and, and gradually more and more weighing down. Like watching an old barn start the, watching the roof sag on it until it finally collapses. Well, it's changed from that to feeling very choppy. I mean, at times I'm feeling better, but 
for for brief periods, I'm actually feeling worse. I mean, it, it's a, like a sharp roller coaster. And there have been times since coming down here that, yes, I have started to think about suicide again. And uh, I am gritting my teeth and, and uh, getting through it as best I can. I mean, I know it's just my stupid depression, which is a disease that's fighting me. But it becomes hard after a while. And unfortunately, whatever contributions I've made here, it hasn't, whatever I can rationally realize I've accomplished and am accomplishing, and the, the, the generous gratitude I do get from the others here at Factory Farm, including Marchin, the uh, project director, however much I can rationally think that I am making positive contributions, I'm doing things that haven't been done before and seeing things in different ways that are help, helping out, even though I, I, I couldn't even use a wrench to save my life. I'm not, I'm, I'm no good with any, any kind of machining. And they've got, they've had documenters here who are really, really skilled, a lot more skilled than I am. But there's still stuff that I see and do, and I think I, I've, you know, rationally, I feel I've, I believe that I've been making positive contributions. But in terms of feelings and depression, I still feel useless. I feel like I'm a, a strain that I'm just taking up space here. And again, you know, that I know that's, I rationally know that's the pr depression, but those feelings are very sharp and strong at times to the point where I feel like packing my things in my car and actually leaving my car here with a note donating it to the uh, cause to be sold off or whatever and walking off and finding a bridge somewhere. That actually has, that thought has come to me. It's not with me right now. Fortunately, the past few days have been a bit better, and hopefully it'll get a little bit better time. But I'm starting to think that perhaps a change of scenery might be in order. Um, and so I'm actually pondering that. I am pondering ending my uh, dedicated project visit. I'm mean, starting to get into things that I need to get accomplished on my computer for uh, documentation that I actually cannot accomplish here on my laptop, or it, it, it takes exceptionally long times. Like, editing the, these videos together, as choppy and sloppy as they are, I mean, it, it, it takes sometimes three hours just to load the raw video into a Windows Live Movie Maker, which is the only movie maker I have, and I do not have money to be able to afford Final Cut Pro or professional packages. So that, and the Windows Sound Recorder, which is it doesn't let you edit sound at all, it just lets you record and then you can paste it in as quote unquote music to a narrate over video which is what I'm doing here and what I have been doing in the previous videos. That sort of stuff it's I'm really straining my laptop. I've only got a few gigs left on the internal hard drive. I've started to do animation with SketchUp and I want to learn to do even more by incorporating SketchUp drawings into to Blender because I can actually show how to do stuff through animation. But there's just no way I'm going to be able to accomplish that with my uh, laptop. So rationally, there, there, there's reasoning for uh, moving out and uh, doing some of this documentation work off-site. I want to do some animation support for the videographers here. Right now there's a Becca I was previously in. And I think I could start learning animation, and I, you know, that would help me because there's stuff I want to learn how to animate, but it's it's hard trying to focus and, and teach myself if I don't have like one project to focus on where I can pick up the skills as I go along. But uh, my friend David, who's been the construction manager here, uh, sounds like he has a really good shot at... Uh, getting a uh, good paying job in Columbus, Ohio, and he's invited to let me move in with him and help him out with his, his daily chores because he's probably going to have to commute there. And that'd be a good opportunity. I mean, I could go with him. I could take my desktop, which has been just sitting in my car gathering dust because I can't plug it in here on the side. And I can start doing animation stuff and, and doing supporting work. And it's a bit less chaotic. I mean, I wouldn't have to worry so much about being able to provide for myself because David's pretty generous, and you know I can I can do chores for him in exchange for for a bit of a help out.